This is log number nine. Um, I'm recording this on the 21st of December. And um, this is going to be a very interesting and unique uh, log. I'm going to be sharing with you as, as an example of how the interaction with the, um, with the design will go. As before, today that you're hearing this on the 25th that it's going to be released was supposed to be the um, the release of the first arc of the Stonemason journey. But due to my um, constant um, questioning and, and additions to the theme, I, I understood that that's no longer a feasible day or day to, to release it. So the way that this log will go, on the, on the first part, I'm going to talk about what happened this week. And on the second part, is going to be the visual and sort of sharing my screen on how an example and a template of a design that has nothing to do with the story or how it's going to look, but more of the execution of it and how it's going, it can function. So let's get into it. Um, so in the first part, I'm going to talk about what happened this week. Um, so this week has been rather, rather interesting as of any week, really. Uh, I started the second design. I decided to go with um, a different type of paper. I had three types of paper to test on, and the first one was a incredible surprise, as it has a lot of texture. And I didn't expect it to work so well, so I really liked that. And the second paper that I'm testing out now has less texture, but more of the, the subtle and smoother sort of shadows can be happening. So I am using that, although I'm not really sold on it as of now. I'm still going to use it and see how it goes. Um, there's not a really a chance of me not sort of using it because it doesn't work. I don't think so. Um, but it's going to be a variation, even though it's... it's a different design and it's on the same sort of place um i wanted to test different textures and such so um i started measuring the design it was going pretty methodically so on monday i did the the lower ground and on tuesday i started doing the outline of the figures and then on wednesday was the faces where thursday was going to be the top part and on friday finishing up everything measuring wise and then the next week beginning on the 25th now was going to be the adding the shadows and making everything look nice and pretty but yesterday as i was doing the faces i started sort of seeing some some parts that i didn't really like not in terms of what i was designing but the overall composition um given that i had an experience with my previous composition and how that is going and the reference that I had was done way before I even engaged in, in drawing or designing physically the designs. I decided today, waking up, uh, to reevaluate my uh, my reference composition. So the reference composition is basically the design that I'm transcribing onto the in the paper. I'm doing the measurements and such. So I started seeing how the the faces are, are looking, the positioning. Do I really want this this pose and 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 so forth and so so to explain uh, what's what's happening uh, as I was I was creating it and and sort of seeing the the mishaps I understood that this design which is titled as a decoy of a of a title the the boy I uh, I've seen how it looks okay but I could really add some more flavor into it let's say just some more context and 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 meat behind this this story of this composition because every composition i have to think about how people will interact where they will click if what they're clicking is repetitive or not for example if the previous design was all about clicking and reading this book then should i have the second design having a book as well or a note you know things of that nature I realized for this design, I really didn't think about that. And I began meddling with it. And after a few hours, um, four hours ago or so, uh, I reevaluated it and I changed it quite a bit. I did drastic changes into the composition. Uh, the figure completely changed. Uh, and it had a lot of 
a lot of new details and new stories behind even though the initial story which is already written is still embedded in it i decided to add that as a preview sort of hint what i mean by that is that given that days and hours are have passed and years have passed since what has been what is being described in the book and what is the actual condition of the places now so in the story in this particular chapter the third chapter the final chapter of arc one um the the story goes as this this narrator describing how it used to be and how in the past it used to have this statue and this statue and etc now what the design is showing and what all the designs are showing is how it looks in the present so i found i always knew that i wanted to sort of have the past overlapping the present but then having lots of differences that everyone will get to see and, and sort of explore and based on the exploration that uh, everyone does they get to see what came before and so in this design the the new design that i've um that i've sort of redone you can see in in the passage what was described before of the statue uh in the in the rubble you get to understand that like this is the same spot that is being described in the in the in the chapter but it has a different it's a different statue now a different sort of um presence given that many years have passed since that day that was that, was, that is being recalled on so in, in in that moment of me understanding that i'm going to be having this sort of overlappings and sometimes complete diversions of the of the initial sort of established statue i began sort of questioning if i was a stonemason and i was living here for 20 30 years how would i how would i sort of feel looking upon these the same statues i would for one break them i would sort of try and try to depict something that is more topical or more recent and and something that i would love to see forever so with that concept i began redesigning this uh, and i did i'm really confident with the new design it has a lot of personalized sort of moments with the stone mason and the actual sort of overarching story and and now i'm i'm considering um how how much in depth should i go with it and moving forward um today i decided to sort of record and, and make sure that the uh, the experience for uh, for the depiction of how the the the, the exploration of the set designs will be uh, and and Tomorrow I will sort of do the measurements that have changed. A lot of the initial design has, has been erased and added, I added different stuff, so I need to remeasure some things, but it not, it's not starting from scratch, which is a real good thing. And I, I was contemplating actually on that, if I should start everything from scratch, because it's not really that developed. I would say um, I've done 30% of it, which is not too far for me to redo everything. But... The foundations that I have there are the foundations that still stayed there. So it's okay, I suppose. Um, so I decided I want to embrace this change. And given that my markings in the beginning, it's always very light. It's not very shadowy. There's not a lot of um, markings that show after you erase them, which would have been a problem if that was the case. So um, moving forward tomorrow and, and this week that you're listening to this, um i'm gonna be working on uh on, on redoing the measurements and hopefully by by friday uh i can have the whole design completed in terms of um the measurements and then having another week just to do the shadows which will bring me to the other point of um so i've been trying to make the mathematics on on how uh, how much time does it take me to do a design and i realized that i it, in a good scenario, I will need two weeks, and in a bad scenario, I need three weeks. So close to, let's say, two and, two and a half weeks of, of average working on a design. So I have 
including well excluding this i have six other designs to do i have four other designs that are the same size and three no se seven more designs to do. okay i forgot that there's another extra one and and three that are much bigger and have a lot more detail given they are the initial sort of concept that will go next to the chapter and then as you explore other designs are going to deviate from it so um i'm trying to consider like when will be the deadline that i would like to set it once again again deadlines are not for me to sort of stress over but much rather for me to have an understanding like that's what i want to aim for end of march and april those two months seems to be quite feasible uh, and the amount of work that I need to do and all the exploration that I, is going to happen because I'm having a lot of revelations and I'm still, I wouldn't say in the beginning, but when it comes to the designs, I'm still very early on. And considering that, considering it takes me, let's say, six months to create an arc, which initially I thought six months will be the whole stonemation story, right? That's why I was like, oh, it's going to be smaller, it's going to be a lot less. But apparently it isn't. So if every arc would take six months, so we're looking into a year and a half of of of, of working on the stonemason journey. But it's just an estimation of where this will be done. And I'm sure by the 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 finishing of the first arc, I'm gonna have a lot more ideas, and it's gonna get a lot better as it goes along. Because now it it got way better than what I expected in the beginning, and I have done so much work that I'm. And now with this new, well, every week with this new, I call them new eyes, given that it's like a new mindset going into it. What I've done previously, even the, the, the words, the paragraphs that I wrote, I know how to sort of like complete them a lot better now. But it, it was essential for me to do it in the beginning, so I have a standpoint, a foundation. So yeah, um, that is the, uh, the work that has been going on this week and beginning of this, this new week. It's all going to be about uh, redoing the measurements and hopefully by Friday I'm able to finish the design. Okay, um, so now I'm going to switch to the sharing screen mode. I want you to bear in mind that what you're seeing is uh, a very early, early alpha stage sort of idea. I'm just showing you how everything can work and the freedom that I have. So the design that you're seeing here is the design that I've showed in a couple of logs back it's one of the well, it was my first attempt to sort of do the designs and it was a, a failure for many other reasons and it was underdeveloped and whatnot but I, I i chose i can use this to sort of show you how the interactions will go so as you can see here the let's just take into consideration that this won't be the, the way that it's going to look in terms of the gray background and everything this is just a template so let's imagine that on the left side or maybe on top or whatnot, we're going to have the text and you're going to read it. So you, let's imagine we read the text and this is the design that is followed with the text. So as you're going around here, you see a lot of a few things that stand out in this particular design, given that it's um, that it's um, done in a very early stage. They're very bl bluntly in your face. So do we see like this... Uh, this picture here and and notes and such and and then a book here so ideally what what can happen is that i i put squares and sort of like sections where you can click on it and really uh get a, a closer look and a, a flavor text with it so for example if we click this one this is a a template um this is a, a poetry piece that i've done in in the past and it's on my website but it's an example of let's say this was a poetry that is going to be introduced here you can zoom in obviously it takes some time to sort of like load up so there is a function that you can zoom in you can i can sort of change this shape the size and there's a lot of freedom here so this is just i just slap this on so you guys can see how it's going to interact and you press x and you go out given that you can see here the square is around here so you can see like the change of the of the mouse cursor you can click on it but what i can do i can make it so small the the clicking sort of space that 
For example, you can click on the face, but if I click here, nothing happens. I'm clicking right now. But you have to click the exact moment, like where the eye socket is, and something will pop up. Obviously, again, a past sort of design that I've done in my blogs, nothing super fancy, it's just an example of how it can look, but how precise I can be with my, um, my locations. As you can see here, this is a bit different. I can have the face or whatever the design might be, and you can zoom into it. I can have a flavor text that it's going to explain, like this face appears to be A, B, C, an example of what I want to introduce. And I can also add some music, as you can see here, I can play some music while choosing. I can have a video in the background, again, a template. I can have different effects of the videos. It's really diverse on the amount of freedom that I have with this, which is really nice because every, every moment of the interaction that you're going to have, I can really curate. Uh, so this is, um, and obviously the background that you're seeing here, I can change it. I just had a sort of a transparent grayish look, which works because you can still see the design behind a little bit, but it's just, this is prototypes given that I haven't even reached the stage where I'm going to be doing designs. It's just testing the idea. And then you can close it. Music closes very nicely. Uh, some of the, the, the poems. So this is a, a poem that, no, not poems, a letter, because you're going to find many letters. So this is a letter that I found on the internet just to show you so I don't spoil you. It's just a handwritten letter that I just Googled and just pasted on here. But it's an interesting idea behind. Obviously, it's very cheesy right now. It looks weird. But I can have sort of um, a video or sounds or something that when you read, for example, let's say this poem is reading out these, these lavender meadows that they used to walk. I could have sort of a faint, you know, the effect of the video faintly sort of suggesting this, um, this, this aromas and senses that you can read from the poem. So again, a lot of diversity that I can, that I can really utilize in, in creating an experience. Also, I can add music and sound effects, whatever you, you might want. And <clears throat> also... There's a decision to be made later down the line if I would want these clicking things to be done on a separate window or existing like light box as you're seeing right here. I like the idea of them overlapping the design because it doesn't really disrupt it. But then I would have liked for whatever you find to be collected so you can go back to it and then have them on, on a separate window so you, can, so you can have them next to each other if you so wish. Um, so what I can do is when you click on this, obviously it's not going to work now because I haven't done it, you, a new window can appear and it can open up on a new tab or I can have it just magnifying or something along those lines. Again, loads of freedom for me to test whatever and any execution that I want. Um, and yeah, another example of how a book might look. So this is the template that I use. One of the templates that I've used. It's a template that you find online being um, a, a free stock photo of just an, sort of an old book. And obviously through Photoshop, I get to add my text if I want some images and the ability to sort of like switch pages and, and continue reading forward or have a synopsis in the beginning sort of explaining the book in terms of like, this is about A, B and C and in the middle is whatever the important thing that I want to point out which you're going to be able to read rather than having like seven pages explaining the point I can summarize the idea of or the thematic of what the, this book is about and then give you the text that I find important not everything will work that way but in the sake of adding useless information and so much sort of me that that becomes confusing I decided to to have options. Also, sometimes uh, I, have, I don't have an example here. Sometimes when you click on something, for example, let's click again on the note. Um, it might not appear in a close-up of a different sort of design. It might be a flavor text saying that you know what the specifically what this thing that you clicked on is. For example, if the letter is there or or this phase, you, let's say this phase was clickable, 
we would click on the face and then it describes it a little bit with a close-up given that the actual design is going to be much more detailed i can even have a more close-up look without having to redesign anything and sort of explain some of the features of it having a, a pronounced nose eyes slanted and it's of it's shadowed or things of that nature to add the the mood that i wish i could explain with the scale but add it through words and some visual so it, it's a lot of a lot of playground on how I can add things. And uh, I'm really excited for this, given that uh, once I knew that it works, it means that whatever comes next is just my decisions and how I'm going to shape up the story. And yeah, um, I think this wraps up the, the prototype of how this is going to work. I think I'm going to have another sort of up-to-date prototype experience or even when the arc sort of launches i can i can narrate it and have it in um in in my experience sort of how i explored it which begs the question i think everyone will have a different way of exploring something because it's not going to be as obvious as this one even that okay there's a paper here you can click this and you can see the cursor but for example when it comes to the eye it's so small that you have to really be precise and I can even make it a lot smaller. So it's the sky's the limit here. And um, it, it needs a lot of refining. Uh, but the uh, I'm sure you understand how it's going to be interactable now. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how everyone will, will, will wrap their heads around this. Because there's a lot of work going behind all of these designs. A lot of work going behind the story. And... and how much detail I want to introduce in this. And one thing that I understood from Flow, well, I understood many things, but <laughs> this particular part when it comes to storytelling is that it worked that I was present as I was designing it and creating it and talking with, with people that were interested because I was giving them my mindset and telling them, you know, the hand that you're looking here resembles this, this or the emotions that I'm going through or what I'm wished I'm dep depicting or I'm going to depict sort of like hopes, dreams and reality type of thing working together that when someone gets sort of behind the logic of why why something appears to be that way they begin to sort of inherit a thinking process that they didn't really consider it before and through that they begin to have a critical sort of mind of exploring any other designs or compositions that this may they may flourish so it was my hope that through this interaction of you being able to click things and sort of have like, okay, what is this? Like, I'm interested in this. And you click the face and you see a more detailed version in my words underneath. It sort of mimics that, that ability of me being able to explain to people what's happening, but at the same time, give them the complete freedom to understand and really go through it in their own way. And introducing music and sounds, it's really helpful in really creating the um the experience that i that i find that this might be something that um it's going to really bring out the storytelling abilities that i wish i could um i could create and and really have in an exhibition sort of um theme or or execution because in any theme, in the end, you exhibit in some way or you showcase it. And given that I, I never liked exhibitions, how they stand for right now, and I, I tried doing it before in flow, and I, I again realized that it wasn't for me, and I did it in my own way, and I created my catalog and how that sort of um, works and interacts. Playing and learning from that. This is the result that you're going to be seeing now. And this is the, the accumulation of my travels and my maturing as a, as a person and as a, as a soul in the world that is witnessing and, and trying to understand how things are, are, are functioning in an emotional level. And at the same time, how that affects an individual who is empathetic and quite emotional as well. So um, I hope this was... Um, informative for you and you found 
something of interest and you're able to visualize a little bit more on how the, the execution will, will happen. Given that now everything is templates and not even the actual pictures that I'm going to be using, I think the freedom that I am able to have is, is translated quite well for anyone to sort of add their own personality behind. And then when they see the original thing, the, the actual arc sort of um, coming out to, to perhaps go back to this video, there's this peculiar log that is going to showcase where I started and how it sort of developed in the months to come, which is going to be in the works. Thank you very much for taking the time. And I think this, this is quite a, a bit of time that I took from your day. And um, let's see how this uh, story will be presented.